Welcome to About Cal Green, the fifth installment in the California Building Standards Commission's educational video series. I am Enrique Rodriguez and I'll be presenting an overview of the California Green Building Standards Code, which is Part 11 of Title 24 of the California Code of Regulations, commonly known as Cal Green. I'll be using that term throughout this video. If you would like to know more about the California Building Standards Commission and its charge to administer the rulemaking process, watch our videos titled About the California Building Standards Commission and About the Rulemaking Process found on our Education and Outreach webpage. Also, please note that during this video, the acronym CBSC will be used to refer to the California Building Standards Commission. This Cal Green video focuses specifically on CBSC's authority to develop green building standards for occupancies where no other state agency has authority. Generally, this is for non-residential occupancies like commercial properties and state buildings. Other state agencies have authority to develop green building standards for schools, hospitals, and residential occupancies. These regulations are also found in Cal Green. The history of Cal Green, which is the first in the nation Green Building Standards Code, is relatively short but very significant. It began in 2007 when CBSC was directed to develop Green Building Standards in an effort to meet the goals of California's landmark initiative, Assembly Bill 32, known as California Global Warming Solutions Act. AB 32, Chapter 488, Statutes of 2006, added Division 25.5 to the California Health and Safety Code and established law requiring a comprehensive program for reduction of greenhouse gases to 1990 levels by the year 2020. Notably, AB 32 scoping plan identified buildings as the second largest source of California's greenhouse gas emissions. Subsequent to AB 32, Senate Bill 1473, statutes of 2008, specifically gave CBSC the authority to develop green building standards for occupancies for which no other state agency has authority. In response to these legislative mandates, CBSC worked closely with the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Division of the State Architect, and other state agencies to create new green building standards with the goals of, number one, reducing greenhouse gas emissions from buildings, number two, promoting environmentally responsible, cost-effective, healthier places to live and work, number three, reducing energy and water consumption, and number four, responding to the environmental directives of the administration. State agency representatives, industry stakeholders, and interested parties were enthusiastic contributors to the initial code development process and remain active participants in the evolution of Cal Green's measures today. In recent years, other code development organizations around the nation and around the world have begun to put forth their own sustainable building codes modeled after Cal Green. The first edition of Cal Green contained only voluntary measures and was published in 2008 with an effective date of August 2009. It established the administration, definitions, and green building chapters and created five key divisions for sustainable design. Division number one, planning and design. Division number two, energy efficiency. Division number three, water efficiency and conservation. Division number four, material conservation and resource efficiency and division number five, environmental air quality. Many of the original voluntary green building standards became mandatory in the 2010 Cal Green edition, which went into effect in January 2011. The Green Code ensured that new construction projects in California would be built in compliance with sustainable construction practices. The 2010 edition also made the distinction between residential and non-residential occupancies by creating separate chapters in order to make the code more user-friendly. Between 2010 and 2019, there have been many updates and additions to Cal Green, including electric vehicle charging infrastructure, water conservation and recycling, and changes intended to eliminate conflicts with the California Energy Code, which is part six of Title 24. Another significant change to Cal Green was the inclusion of triggers for additions and alterations to existing buildings undergoing an addition of 1,000 square feet or more or an alteration that has a permit valuation of $200,000 or more. The intent of this code change was to capture a greater number of California's buildings 
and to increase sustainable construction in the state. On July 11, 2018, the California Air Resources Board announced in a press release that, quote, greenhouse gas pollution in California fell below 1990 levels for the first time since emissions peaked in 2004, an achievement roughly equal to taking 12 million cars off the road or saving 6 billion gallons of gasoline a year, end quote. The development of CalGreen has been an important step toward more efficient and responsible building design, which helped California meet the greenhouse gas reduction goal ahead of schedule. CalGreen is divided into chapters and sections similarly to other parts of Title 24. CalGreen's chapters are chapter number one, administration, chapter number two, definitions, chapter number three, scoping, chapter number four, residential green building standards, chapter number five, non-residential green building standards, chapter number six, referenced organizations and standards, chapter number seven, installer and special inspector qualifications, and chapter number eight, compliance forms, worksheets, and reference material. Also note that in addition to the mandatory green building standards in chapter four and five, voluntary options for more stringent standards are provided in appendix chapters. Appendix chapter A4 has voluntary residential green standards and appendix chapter A5 has voluntary non-residential green standards. Additionally, appendix A6.1 contains voluntary standards for health facilities. These voluntary standards are referred to as tiers. Now, let's look at how the CalGreen tiers are used. Tiers provide designers and jurisdictions the opportunity to go beyond the minimum mandatory requirements in an effort to promote the use and design of construction concepts that minimize the building's impact on the environment and promote a more sustainable design. Tier 1 requirements are more stringent than the base mandatory CalGreen provisions, and Tier 2 achieve an even higher standard. One example in the 2019 CalGreen Code is electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Tier 1 requires 8% of parking spaces to be designated for electric vehicles versus the mandatory 6%, and Tier 2 requires 12%. Another example is a requirement under the Water Efficiency and Conservation Division. Indoor water used for Tier 1 is a 12% savings beyond mandatory minimums, and Tier 2 is 20%. There are tier options for every division of CalGreen, but only certain mandatory measures that can be made more restrictive are provided in the tiers. For example, excavated soil and land clearing debris is already required to be 100% recycled or reused, so this provision cannot be made more restrictive. Local building departments or local enforcement agencies that want to be more sustainable can choose to adopt a tier or elements from within a tier as their standard by creating an ordinance. As previously stated, California has already met its greenhouse gas reduction goals in part because of the enthusiastic adoption of some tier options by jurisdictions. Consult with your local building department to see if they require additional green building standards above and beyond the base CalGreen code. Additionally, individual owners and developers can choose to incorporate tier elements into their designs even if it's not required by the local building department. Complying with an adopted tier requires that you first meet the minimum mandatory CalGreen provisions. Then for each tier, there are prerequisite measures which must be incorporated into the design in order to achieve the tier. Finally, in addition to the prerequisites, a certain number of elective measures need to be selected within each division. Simply put, to achieve a CalGreen Tier 1 or Tier 2, you must first meet all the minimum mandatory measures plus each division's prerequisites along with the designated number of electives that the tier level requires. If this sounds confusing, don't worry. <music> to make CalGreen more user-friendly, there are detailed checklists provided in each new edition of the CalGreen Code and in CBSC's non-residential CalGreen Guidebook, which I'll discuss shortly. The checklist assists code users in verifying compliance with the mandatory provisions of CalGreen and the voluntary tiers if required or desired. This is important because some jurisdictions require the checklist to be turned in when plans are submitted for permitting. 
Local jurisdictions may customize the checklist if they have adopted tiers or tier elements as mandatory. So it's a good idea to consult with your local building department early in the design phase and before seeking a permit. Another important provision in Cal Green is building commissioning. Commissioning requirements apply to new, non-residential buildings. Commissioning is a quality assurance process that ensures that buildings and components perform to their design capacity, including documentation for building owners and property managers. Commissioning is very complex, so CBSC has developed reference standards that are printed in Cal Green. In Chapter 8, the section called Commissioning Reference Standards for Non-Energy Related Systems includes sample forms and templates for commissioning. Commissioning for energy related systems is required by the California Energy Code, which is part six of Title 24. Please note that commissioning is not the same as a certification that a building is green or sustainable, such as when a building owner seeks a rating from an outside organization that the building is zero net energy or a similar desired designation. While CBSC was developing this video in early 2020, more changes to Cal Green were in progress, and we foresee a continued evolution of green building standards for years to come. You can follow rulemaking activities related to Cal Green on CBSC's website at dgs.ca.gov forward slash bsc forward slash rulemaking. Additionally, I would like to make you aware of two Cal Green guidebooks that are designed to assist code users. First, CBSC's Cal Green Guide focuses on non-residential applications and corresponds with the chapters in Cal Green. Its emphasis is on the non-residential mandatory requirements in Chapter 5 and the non-residential voluntary measures in Appendix Chapter A5. The intent of each code section is explained and compliance and enforcement recommendations are provided. The Cal Green Guide is formatted as follows. First, code sections are shown in green text. Next, the intent of the requirement is explained, and sometimes there's also an explanation of other laws or regulations that prompted the regulation. If part of the code has changed, we've identified the new code language or amendments made during the most recent code adoption cycle. Then, compliance methods are presented, which may include design team information, suggestions, or examples. And finally, enforcement recommendations for plan intake and on-site inspection are provided for plan reviewers and inspectors. Note that sections of the Cal Green Code marked reserved are not shown in the guide. The second Cal Green guidebook is published by the Department of Housing and Community Development and is intended to assist code users for residential applications. At this time, the Cal Green guides can be viewed or purchased from the International Code Council's web store, shop.iccsafe.org. We hope that you've enjoyed this recap of Cal Green and encourage you to look into the resources available to you. If you have any questions regarding the application of Cal Green to your non-residential project, please call us or email us. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.